This nugget focuses on exploring the differences between Scrum development and traditional development. And we're going to do that in three main ways. The primary discussion is doing a direct comparison between Scrum and traditional development approaches. And I'm going to say there's no difference between Scrum and traditional development approaches in that the end result is working software. So if you only look at the inputs, business requirements, and only look at the outputs, working software, there is no difference between Scrum and traditional development because they both develop the same outputs from the same inputs. But I think you also experience there's a huge difference between Scrum and traditional development based on the principles of Scrum that we discussed in the introductory nugget. So we will delve into a little more detail in that. And to me, one of the best ways of differentiating between Scrum and traditional development is the Agile Manifesto. When Agile development approaches were first developed, I can't, I can't find the right word, considered, thought of, invented, the group of individuals who developed the general approaches to Agile development developed the Agile Manifesto. And as I said, Scrum is an Agile approach. So although Scrum has some very specific management approaches, the principles of Agile development, the Agile ver Manifesto very much still apply. So we will go through and examine the Agile Manifesto. And then to continue the drill down, we will go from the Agile Manifesto to the 12 principles of Agile development. And with that, I think we will truly differentiate between Scrum, or as this nugget is more focused on, generic agile approaches and the comparison between generic agile approaches scrum and generic approaches to, to traditional development so continuing on the definition that we have an input of business requirements and we have an output of working software I want to explore more this concept of there are no differences between Scrum and Agile and an extremely huge difference between Scrum and Agile. Recognizing that we're based on the same premise of inputs and outputs, I will also say there's no difference between Scrum and traditional approaches because they all do analysis. They all do design, they all do development, they all do testing, and they all do implementation. If we're using a Scrum approach, we do analysis, we do design, and we do development. And I want to stop right there and focus on that for just a few minutes. A lot of people, when they first are introduced to Scrum approaches, think there's no analysis, there's no design. We have these very short sprints, and all we do is write code. That's not true. We do analysis and we do design for every user story. So for every story, and the story may only take a total of six hours from inception to completion, but for every user story, the team member will do analysis. The team member will get time with the product owner and the team member will say, I don't really understand what you mean by this sentence. Can you better describe? Can you help me better understand what the sentence means? That's analysis. With the full understanding of the what it is that the story is requesting the team member to do, the team member will then probably go away for some quiet time, another hour, and do design. Well, in order to accomplish the what's of the story, Here's what I need to do. And they're going to do the design. And the design may be code design. The, co the design may be database design. The design will absolutely be testing design. Not mandatory that we use test-driven development, but a, a common principle in Scrum development is that we use test-driven development that we will do code design. We will do database design. We definitely will do testing design. We may need to do infrastructure design, and so on and so on. So there, again, there's absolutely design happening. T 
total of a six hour story, we may take 30 minutes for analysis. We may take one hour for design. We make two hours for development. And then we do the actual coding. And whether we code this in a pair programming approach or whether we code this in an isolated single team member approach, we will do development and we will do testing. So we'll probably spend another hour doing testing. And my numbers aren't going to quite add up to six. I'm coming a little short here. So let's say we actually did three hours of development, the one hour of testing, and then we will do whatever is required for implementation. So 30 minutes. And I'm going to include in that implementation is going to be the documentation. So we may need help text. We may need a user's guide. We may need an operations guide. Whatever documentation is required to complete that story is also done as part of that story development within the sprint. So again, there's no difference. We have an input, we have an output of working software, and within each story, not just within each sprint, but within each story, we do analysis, design, development, testing, and implementation. However, there is one significant difference between traditional development and iterative development or scrum development is in traditional development, we typically do each of these once. In traditional development, we're going to do two months of analysis. And at the end of analysis, we're going to create an analysis doc. And we're going to present that analysis doc that covers all of the requirements to the business for formal review. And then we're going to do three months of design. And at the end, we're going to produce a design document. And we're going to produce that very detailed technical design document that includes all of the hows for all of the requirements. And we're going to expect sign off. And then we'll go into development. And we may spend five and a half months in development. And we're going to develop all of the code. And we're going to unit test all of the code. And we're going to system test all of the code. And when the team is convinced that the code is functional, we'll move into a formal business accepting process. And that may take two months and so on. And then we do a single implementation. The big difference is we do it many times in very short increments with a very short focus on a very unique, specific requirement, a small, well-defined user story, as opposed to doing it all up front with a large scale, all requirements, all design and so on. So the big difference, Scrum is iterative versus traditional approaches. And I'm going to just generically call it waterfall, recognizing that there are a number of current, but I'm going to say still traditional development approaches that are not non waterfall. But Scrum is a substantial deviation from traditional development approaches. And the focus is on iterative. And the other big focus is on small usable results delivered often. So to me, if I was to call out the significant differences between Scrum and other approaches is, I think everybody appreciates it's the iterative versus the waterfall. But the other key differences, and this is the real reason that Scrum has so much power is it's small, it's well managed, it's well defined, it's predictable, and it's a usable, and it is result based. Everything we do in Scrum needs to be implementable. There's no, oh, I'll just take it to the end of analysis and put it on the shelf and come back to it in three months time when I'm ready to do it in design and come back to it again. Scrum is focused on the one touch approach. 
you pick up the user story, you do everything required to complete the user story, and when you're done, the results is usable or potentially usable. And that, that's another word that we often use in Scrum approaches is potentially usable. The story in and of itself is complete and usable. But we use the word potentially usable because the story is so finite, the story is so discreet, the story is so focused that we may need three or five or ten other stories packaged together to truly deliver the full business functionality. So story number one that we're focused on may be the ability to enter customer information. And story number two is the ability to modify customer information. And story number three is the ability to activate a customer. And story number four may be the ability to accept an order from the customer. And story number five may be the ability to ship the order. And story number six may be the ability to invoice the order. And I'm actually way over stating the complexity of a story because a story to ship an order is actually not a story, it's a term that we'll use later that's called an epic. Shipping an order is what we would describe in Scrum as an epic. It is a large composite of stories. To ship the, the, the order would be validating inventory. That would be a story. Con committing inventory would be a story. Determining inventory location would be a story and so on and so on and so on. But the, for, for the purpose of initial discussions, it's easier to keep a user story directly tied to a, a key business process, recognizing that the word epic is probably more appropriate than story. But when we combine stories into an epic, the epic is probably a deliverable, valuable piece of code where each story is usable but needs to be amalgamated to create the usable results. So, no difference. We do the same things. Agile teams do the same development work that waterfall teams do, but they do it very differently. Agile teams employ the same functions as waterfall teams. Requirements gathering, analysis design, coding implementation but we do it in a very different fashion. And that's what the difference of Scrum is. And again, I think that's well called out as we review and, and digest and understand the Agile Manifesto. And here is the Manifesto for Agile Software Development taken straight from the public facing website, agilemanifesto.org. You're welcome to go and view that on your own. The Agile Manifesto came from a meeting of like minds quite some time ago in February of 2001. So this is not brand new, state-of-the-art, bleeding edge, but it is still a very, very powerful approach for ensuring we're developing software solutions the most effectively. And when these like-minded individuals met back in February of 2001, their focus was on discovering better ways for developing software and to deploy those better ways to help others do it the same way. And here's what they come up with. Here's the actual manifesto. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So let's talk about this just a little bit. Individuals and interactions. So we talked about the scrum team and that we have a scrum master and a product owner and a team. And the key from this manifesto is the team itself. There is no manager. It's a self-organizing, self-fulfilling organization focused on achieving project results. So the focus is on the individual and the individuals forming the scrum team and the interactions of how that leaderless team is going to function appropriately to ensure that they are satisfying completing the objectives of the project, that they are satisfying completing the objectives of 
the sprints and the releases. So the focus of Agile slash Scrum is on the individuals and the interactions over traditional waterfall approaches of the processes and tools. Now, this presentation is very deliberate. The focus, the bolding, and the size of the font is larger on the left than on the right. But in Scrum, we have both. Our focus is on the individuals and the interactions with far less focus on the processes and the tools. But we've already discussed that we have processes and tools in Scrum. We have our rituals. We have our daily Scrum. We have our planning meeting. We have our, our Scrum review. And we have our Scrum uh, retrospect. So we have processes. We also have tools. We have our daily burn down chart. We have our storyboard. We have our backlog. So we have processes and tools that make Scrum work. But the focus is on the Scrum team being the self-organizing, self-fulfilling organization to ensure that we're delivering maximum value. Our next key to the manifesto is working software. Our goal is to produce results. Every time we pick up a story, we should have analysis, design, development, testing, and implementation. So every story, everything we work on in a Scrum Sprint, the focus is on working software. Over comprehensive documentation. But as we discussed, in implementation, we may need to do documentation. We may need to create help text. We may need to create user's manuals. We may need to create operations guides. So again, a common misconception of Scrum approaches is all we do is write code. Our focus is on writing quality, deliverable, functional, perfect code, but we will also produce the appropriate documentation as part of our, as part of our Scrum, as part of our process as needed, but only enough documentation. And that's another key aspect to Scrum is only enough documentation to satisfy, and I'm going to deliberately use the word minimal requirements. Our focus is on good, high quality software, and we will produce the appropriate amount of documentation to support our software. Our customer collaboration, the product owner is part of our team. We expect the product owner to spend a considerable amount of his or her day, I'm going to say at least 50% of their day, hands on with the team. So absolutely very cooper collaborative, cooperative process. As we said in the introductory nugget, we have in complete transparency of our Scrum process to the business. We want to be collaborative. We don't want to have massive legal contractual obligations between the development team and the business. And I don't mean this just from the viewpoint of an external organization needing a contract to work for an internal organization. If you're using an external development firm to do Scrum development, you will need some contract work. I prefer to, to treat contract as this pure small letter contract is it's an implied unwritten contract between the development team and the business that we're going to undertake this massive engagement called a project that's the contract. With Agile, the contract is we're going to work collabor collaboratively and cooperatively with you. We're going to be agile and nimble. We're going to support the adjustments. We're going to allow you to add to the, to the scope of the product. We're going to allow you to delete from the scope of the project dynamically as we discussed in the introduction, we're not going to try to hold you to original scope definition that allowed us to complete analysis, which is directly leading to our next aspect of the Agile Manifesto, which is responding to change over following a plan. The only plan in Scrum that we want to stick to is the sprint plan. When we select stories for a sprint, 
and we start a sprint of two to three weeks, the expectation is that sprint will complete with no changes to the focus of that sprint. The eight stories that were selected for that sprint will be completed and delivered at the end of that sprint. That's the only place we don't allow change is within the sprint, but within a release, within the product, within the prioritization of what stories go into the next sprint, absolutely we want to respond to change. Last week you thought story 15 was the highest priority. Next week or this week as we're going into our sprint plan, it's no longer the highest priority. We've had new competitive uh, stresses put into our organization and we have a new higher priority. So again, the fact that we're only committing to a plan for a sprint and a sprint is two weeks, the rest of the time Scrum is very much responding to change. And those are our, our, that is our Agile manifesto. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools, work in software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. And as discussed, that is, while there's value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. We do all of these, but our focus is on these. And way back in February of 2010, these are the like-minded individuals who got together to invent, strategize on, put together the principles for agile development, which has become the foundation for Scrum development. The next thing I want to discuss with you is the 12 principles of agile software development, also available here directly from this website. So totally consistent with the manifesto, here are the principles. We will follow these principles. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. No longer do they have to wait through the two months of analysis and the three months of design, et cetera, et cetera, and get it all in one fell swoop 12 months later. With Scrum, we deliver quality, working software at the end of the first sprint. We may choose not to implement it and make it functional in the organization at the end of the first sprint. As I said, we may need to combine several sprints together into the scrum term in Epic, where an Epic is going to be equating to a business process, but very early, weeks in or certainly a month or so into our scrum development, we would be able to implement quality software that is going to deliver some value to our business unit. We welcome changing requirements, even late in development. Agile processes harness change for the com customer's competitive advantage. If we go back to the diagram that we had with the, the, the product and the releases and the sprints, we want the customer to evolve their requirements. We want the business to be able to be flexible and adoptable. We want to be able to say, okay, this is what we thought we were gonna do in the next sprint, but I understand there's been a change in government legislation. I understand there's a change in the competitive situation. I understand you have new priorities for us, so let's embrace those changes and let's do exactly what you need to ensure our organization is gonna be most successful. We deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months, combining as many sprints as we need to deliver business value. And obviously we want to deliver working software as quickly as possible, because the sooner we deliver working software, the sooner the business is going to get value from that working software. Business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. Our business owner is part of our project team. Sorry, not our business owner, our product owner is part of our project team. Build projects around motivated individuals. Give them the environment and the support they need and trust them to get their job done. Using a Scrum approach does not directly 
ensure we have motivated individuals, but experience is that people who work on agile projects enjoy the environment, enjoy the job satisfaction that the, the agile scrum approaches do it. And research has shown that in, in the range of 15 to 20 percent improved productivity, 15 to 20 percent improved job satisfaction because most people working on software development enjoy the thrill and I believe thrill is the right word enjoy the thrill of delivering quality software and enjoy the thrill of seeing that quality software work and be used in the organization and because we do that often we increase the motivation and we increase the productivity of our development team. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. If you remember back I said a, the story is best written on an index card because it eliminates the hiding behind the computer screen. You pick up the index card and you read it and you don't fully understand it. You take that index card in hand, you walk over to the product owner, you grab them for a couple of minutes and you say, I don't understand this. Can you help me understand this? The index card, the user stories, almost forces face-to-face -face conversation to deliver, to convey, to get that better understanding. Work in software is the primary measure of progress. I don't think I need to speak more to that. The business gets value from the software. Agile processes promote sustainable, develop, sustainable development. The sponsors, developer, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. People often thought going into Scrum that that's not a true statement because there is the stress of continuous delivery. Every sprint we need to produce results. Every sprint can be a mini implementation. Oh, the stress. I have to complete every sprint. True, but the size, the scope, the magnitudes of the sprints is so well defined that that stress disappears and people work at a sustainable pace. And we develop, again, this principle that we, we already introduced called velocity that we'll call out more in future nuggets. We, we de determine what our team's velocity is, and then we consistently and predictably deliver to that velocity week after week, month after month, year after year, and we can keep that pace going forever because the stress of the big deliverables is gone and the enjoyment of the continuous delivery is there. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. We recognize that we need to support refactoring. We recognize that we need to eliminate technical debt. We recognize the fact that we need to ensure that the code we're producing is high quality or if we have to make compromises in our code quality to achieve a certain objective, we make a promise to ourselves, and that's the technology debt, to go back and fix that less than perfect strategy that we put in place. Scrum is all about simplicity. The art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. We do the absolute minimum to complete the expectations of the user story and nothing more. There's no gold plating, there's no embellishing, there's no saying, wouldn't it be nice to add a widget and a gadget and a bell and a whistle to this particular user story? We do just what the user story wanted and we do just the amount of documentation that the user story needs to be usable in the organization. The best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. I think that'll become more evident as we go through this Nugget series. And at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more efficient and then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. We have a scrum retrospective at the end of every scrum to do just that. We reflect on how we can get better and we implement process improvement. And that is agile development, that is scrum development. This nugget was all about getting a better understanding of scrum and comparing scrum to traditional development. 
as we've discussed, there is no difference. We do analysis, we do design, we do development, we definitely do testing, and we do implementation, and we do documentation in both approaches. The big difference is, in traditional, we do this once in a waterfall approach. If I can use that generality. And in Scrum, we do this constantly for each sprint. We combine sprints into releases, and we combine releases into the product. So the big difference is the incremental iterative approach, but we do the same things. There is no magic. There is no different way of writing code. If we're writing Java code in Scrum, we're writing Java code within the coding constructs of Java. If we're writing Java code in a traditional development environment, we're writing exactly the same lines of Java code within the same constructs of the Java programming language. It's the methods with which we do the analysis, the design, the development, the testing and implementation that's so dramatically different. And we brought that out and really brought it forward with the Agile Manifesto and the 12 Principles of Agile Development. Developed in February of 2001. So this is not anything new or magical or mystical. It's, it's a well-established, proven process that is, is getting high quality results worldwide. So again, I hope I've whetted your appetite. I hope I've made you excited about Scrum. I hope I've convinced you that becoming a Scrum master is a very exciting and dynamic career choice. And I hope you're ready to continue through this Nugget series and get ready to be that perfect, that, that empowered Scrum master. This concludes our Nugget on Scrum versus traditional development. I hope this module has been informative for you, and thank you very much for viewing.